Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the ionization energy of hydrogen atom from Lyman series. Next, we will go to the weakness of Bose atomic model and later we will discuss the de Broglie's postulate and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So, please stay with me until the end of the video. Have fun! Ionization energy of hydrogen atom. What is ionization energy? The definition of the ionization energy is the minimum energy required in order to remove one mole of electron from one mole of gaseous atom when it is in ground state. Suppose that we have this gaseous atom of hydrogen. After removing its electron, it will become the gaseous ion, H+. An enthalpy of this reaction is positive, showing that energy is required in order for this reaction to occur. An electron will be written in the right side of the equation to show that electron has been removed from this gaseous atom. So here is the hydrogen atom. There is one valence electron of hydrogen. By providing energy to the atom, electron will absorb that amount of energy and will get excited to the higher energy level. In the case of ionization process, the energy absorbed by the electron is sufficient for the electron to get excited to the highest energy level and even beyond the highest energy level. So that will make the electron can freely remove from the atom. At the end product, we will get this hydrogen ion H+. There will be no more electron in this ion. In the case of hydrogen atom, the hydrogen atom is said to be ionized when electron is removed from the atom from its ground state n equals to 1 to n infinity. The only ground state for hydrogen atom will be n equals to 1 because hydrogen has one valence electron only. And this n infinity is also named, known as convergence limit. So, during this process, energy will be given to the electron, and when this electron absorbs this certain amount of energy, it will get excited to this n infinity. When electron is at n infinity, the potential energy of electron is zero. Why does the value of the energy of electron at n infinity is zero? You can simply use the formula of En in order to calculate the value of energy at n infinity. By substituting the value of infinity into this En formula, we will get the energy of electron at n infinity is zero. So now, there will be no more attraction forces between the electron at the n infinity with the nucleus. At n infinity, the orbital cannot hold the electron anymore and electron can be freely removed from the atom. The energy difference between ground state n equals to 1 and the excited state n infinity is refers to the ionization energy of hydrogen. The ionization energy of hydrogen can be calculated by using this delta E formula. So why we have to use this formula? Because this process of ionization involving two energy levels, which is n equals to 1 and n equals to an infinity. So, since this is excitation or absorption reaction, the movement of the electron will be from the ni to nf. So, N1 will be the initial energy level and N infinity will be the N final. So, by substituting this value Ni and also N final into this formula, you will get your jawapan in Joule. So, in order to get our final answer, 
which is ionization energy. So make sure you have to multiply with Avogadro constant. So by multiply the delta E with Avogadro constant, so later you will get your answer in kilojoule per mole. So the unit for the ionization energy must be in kilojoule per mole. For the value of the delta E here, you will get your answer in positive. Why? Because energy must be required in order to remove the electron. So in order to calculate the IE, please make sure you follow these steps. The first one, calculate the delta E and you will get your answer in joule unit. And later on, to get your answer in kilojoule per mole, you have to multiply with Avogadro constant. So from there, you will get your final answer, ionization energy in kilojoule per mole. The other method to identify the ionization energy of hydrogen atom is by detecting the wavelength of the convergence point or convergence limit. So as in this line spectrum, you must be able to know which one is the first line. So this is the first line in this line spectrum. So I hope you still remember the skill on how to find the first line in the line spectrum. Okay, so by having all these lines, meaning that these lines are actually referring to the electronic transitions, okay, a pergerakan electron from one energy level to the other energy level, okay, uh, like what we did in this energy level diagram, okay. So you can see for this emission series, uh, electron will be will moving from the higher energy level, okay, and goes down to the specific lower energy levels. All right, but for this uh, ionization energy, it is something reverse. Okay, the manner in ionization energy now electron from the first energy level will goes up to the highest energy level, which is n infinity. Okay, so we can see that this process now is actually the excitation. Okay, excitation. Okay, now. So from the line spectrum as well, okay, uh, we are able to find the the value of the ionization energy. Okay, so caranya macam mana? The way is by determining the wavelength in this convergence limit. So in this line spectrum, which one is the convergence point or convergence limit? It is somewhere around here. Okay, so ini adalah garisan or line yang merujuk kepada convergence point or convergence limit. So by knowing the uh, wavelength of this convergence limit, okay, you are able to find the value of the ionization energy. Because please bear in mind, by knowing the lines or by knowing the transition, okay, the electronic transition of these lines, you will be able to find some other extra information such as the delta E, wavelength and frequency. Okay, so by having at least information regarding this wavelength, juga you must be able to find the ionization energy afterwards. Alright, so in this line spectrum, this is the area okay, which, is, uh, which we call as convergence point or convergence limit. If in the energy level diagram here, this is the area of the convergence point or convergence limit which is at n equals to infinity. So by having this method, okay, yaitu by knowing the wavelength of this convergence point or limit, you will be able to find the value of the ionization energy as well. Let us discuss a few concepts regarding convergence limit or convergence point or how we can get the convergence point in Bose atomic model. So this is the energy level diagram, the one that we used in the previous lesson. So as you can see in this energy level diagram, moving from low energy level to high energy level, the energy gap here will be decreases. Okay, so moving from low energy level to high energy level, we can say that the delta E will be increases. The frequency as well will be increases, but the energy gap will be decreases. 
Okay, so energy gap decreases, meaning that the wavelength will be decreases. So as we go uh, towards the, the higher energy levels here, so the lines gap will become smaller and smaller. And finally, we have reached this area whereby the individual energy level here cannot be separated anymore. Okay, and they will merge, okay, forming uh, a continuous lines here. So, the emerging lines here is so-called as convergence limit. At this convergence point or convergence limit, the energy levels can no longer keep any electron. Okay, so that's why when electron moving from low energy level to this convergence point or convergence limit, it, it can be removed from the atom. Compute the ionization energy of hydrogen atom in kilojoule per mole. So in this question, you are required to calculate the value of ionization energy of hydrogen atom in kilojoule per mole. So before you start answering this question, you must be able to identify what are the energy levels that associated with this ionization process. The energy levels that associated with the ionization process is Ni equals to 1 and Nf equals to infinity. By knowing the value of the energy levels, we can simply substitute into delta E formula. So the first step is we have to calculate the value of the delta E. So the formula will be delta E equals to Rh 1 over Ni squared minus 1 over Nf squared. Okay, so since we have identified the value of the Ni and Nf just now, so you may just insert into this formula. So from there, you will get your answer of delta E in Joule. Okay, so delta E is actually the energy that associated between these two energy levels. Okay, and this is, this is not yet our ionization energy so to find ionization energy you have to proceed with the second step that is multiply the delta e with Avogadro's number okay and don't forget to divide with 1000 to get the unit of joule here to be in kilojoule so in the second step here you already find the value of the ionization energy The alignment series of the spectrum of hydrogen is shown above. Calculate the ionization energy of hydrogen atom from the spectrum. So here now we have a line spectrum with the respective informations. Here you have been given the wave number okay, in 10 power of 6 per meter. This symbol lambda is for wavelength. If it is wave number so it is 1 over lambda it is not the same okay lambda is wavelength 1 over lambda is wave number all right now so by having informations in this line spectrum okay you will be able to find the value of the ie if you still remember by determining the wavelength in the convergence limit in the line spectrum you will be able to find the value of the ionization energy so from here which one is the convergence limit okay so firstly you must know this is the first line the end line over here will be the convergence limit. By having the value of this convergence limit, 1 over lambda, now you can proceed with your calculation to find the ionization energy of this hydrogen. You have to start by finding the value of the delta E, then later the IE. So to find the value of the delta E, we can use the formula hc over lambda which equals to hc times 1 over lambda so 1 over lambda is the wave number
Ball atomic model was successfully in explaining the orbital or energy levels and lines that associated with hydrogen atom. But his theory has few weaknesses. The first one is his theory cannot explain the emission spectra or atoms of atoms and ions with more than one electron. So theory of Bohr can successfully explaining the spectra of hydrogen atoms or hydrogen like species such as lithium 2 plus and helium plus because all of them are having one electron. So his theory cannot be used to explain atoms or ions that having more than one electron such as sodium and lithium plus. Second weakness is electrons has weak property. Therefore, we cannot define the precise location of a wave. And the third one is his theory cannot explain the effect of magnetic field on emission spectra. This is due to the appearance of extra lines when we measure for multi-electron system. So to overcome the problem and to know where we can find the electron precisely in an atom, we will study the quantum mechanical model in the next video. In Bohr atomic model, electron is moving in its orbit circling the nucleus in a fixed position. But later, De Broglie showed that we can associate wave with any moving particle. So meaning that when electron moves, it has wave property. So electron appears to have dual natures that are wave-like and particle-like that associated with all the particles in motion. So according to him, electron is particle. So when particle is moving, particle will have this wave property. So as in Bohr atomic model, this is the way electron moves, circling the orbit. But according to De Broglie, electron will moving in these wave-like properties. Werner Heisenberg, in his Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle, showed that it was impossible to precisely determine both the position and the momentum of an electron when the electron is moving. So according to this equation, we can state that at any one time, it is impossible to calculate the momentum and location of an electron in an atom when it is orbiting the nucleus. The delta x here is uncertainty of the measurement of position. And delta p is uncertainty in the measurement of the momentum. According to his equation, knowing the fixed positions of electron or particle, we will uncertain regarding the momentum. And by knowing the momentum of the moving electron or particle, we will uncertain regarding its position. Bila kita tahu kedudukan elektron dengan tepat, kita akan uncertain, tidak pasti dengan kelajuan sesuatu elektron or particle. And then by knowing kelajuan of sesuatu particle yang bergerak, kita akan uncertain, tidak pasti tentang kedudukan yang tepat of elektron tersebut. In the next theory, we will study on the possibility to calculate the probability of finding an electron within a given space, that is in quantum mechanical model. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope this video could help to enhance your understanding in chemistry. Have fun in your learning and remember, chemistry is easy and fun.